You shouldn't complicate the answer and say, cloud is something that's been invented by computers and cloud computing is this and this. That would be you know, a second answer, let's say. If, you, if I direct you to technology-wise cloud or cloud computing, then that's, that's the context of it. So this is basically one of the things that I loved about that you know, uh, session that Steve Ballmer gave. Now, cloud, I can define it even in a complicated way. It's uh, a connected grid of computers that does this or that and so forth. But simply, it's the internet, isn't it? It's basically the internet. So whenever you see cloud, cloud computing, whatever, whatever, cloud means the internet. It has, you know, it's not something that's, you know, new or something that we have invented or someone else invented or Amazon or Google or whatever. It's something that's been existing since 1995 or even beyond. If you go to the origins, it's been there for 40, 40 years now since ARPANET and, and all of the network internet uh, history and so forth. So this is basically the cloud. So just be clear, cloud is the internet, is the web, to be more specific. Cloud computing is something different. And this is what started, and I believe the, the original uh, who, uh, who started this concept was Amazon with their uh, elastic uh, computing, uh, cloud computing uh, infrastructure and so forth. So basically, it's the you know, internet-based cloud cl computing or cloud computing is where shared resources or shared set of computers or computing resources are provided on demand. And that's one very important as, um, you know, characteristic of, of cloud computing. It's on demand. It's not something that sits there and being you know, utilized all the time. or something. It's something you ask for, you grow and shrink based on your demand. This is one thing. And it's like a public utility. So whenever we say public utility, so you consume water, you consume electricity, you consume te te telecommunications as well. And based on your on-demand needs, you'll be paid or you'll be charged, let's say. So this is basically the two characteristics of cloud computing. And that's what actually makes it a hot topic. Uh, that's what actually makes you know, the whole thing you know, is, is relatively new. Because we were not successful until recently to provide computing resources that's like electricity and, and water and, and communications and so forth. So this is basically the idea behind you know, cloud computing. It's on demand, shared, on demand, and uh, dealt with as a utility. So while, you know, cloud computing for the enterprises is, you, know, you can think of it and you can understand it, especially if you are coming from a hosted business, you know, uh, or, or internet service providers or hosting b uh, service providers and so forth. So basically, IT services over the web gives you a number of things that's not applicable if you are building your own data centers. So it's, first of all, highly virtualized. And this is a very important thing. To enable the on-demand thing, you have to be virtualized. You have to decouple the physical from the from the you know, uh, computing resources and memory and so forth. So you can actually grow and shrink. It's managed in a consistent manner. That's very important as well. So you're not talking about you know, uh, different uh, computing resources that are managed different ways and the hassle of manual stuff and manual provisioning and stuff like that. It's very important that you consistently manage it and you offer it in an elastic way. So you can actually grow and shrink based on your customer needs. Or may, maybe you're, you're an enterprise and you would like to deliver that for your business lines in, your, in, in the company. Then this is where you need to think about elasticity. Well, today we have a very demanding application. I need to provision those number of CPUs and memory. Tomorrow, I would like to pull that and give it back to you to, to put it on the pool. So I don't want to use it anymore. So don't charge me anymore for something that I'm not using. That's basically elasticity or scalability as well. So it helps organizations, first of all, reduce costs. Um, basically, this is, by the way, not only new and not only with cloud computing, it's also for the hosted business, the normal hosting business. So basically, you move on from the upfront costs of hardware, software, and services acquisition into an operational cost, monthly cost. So you just rent something, you, you, you get something from, from whoever prov provides that cloud computing infrastructure, and then you pay as you go. Well, uh, today you have uh, uh, 10,000 employees, you pay for 10,000 employees. 
Tomorrow you have 20,000 employees, you pay for 20,000 employees and so forth. So this is basically one thing. It definitely, you know, increases the IT efficiency because basically you will offload the IT leg to that whoever provides that cloud computing infrastructure or hosting business infrastructure in this case. It provides you with continual access to remote users because down the road you may not be able as an organization to actually build a cloud computing infrastructure easily and provide access for every single employee even if they are traveling around the world. So offloading your effort to whoever pro provides a public cloud will enable you to reach more users and more employees of your own. That's, one, that's the, the idea behind it. And more importantly, it provides you with business agility. And what we mean by that is that you can focus on your own core business. And this is where you know, it's becoming a trend that organizations are moving from you know, hosting their own email solutions and collaboration solutions offloading it to someone else and focusing on their core business, a banking, core banking system. Um, let's say um, uh, 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 hospitality kind of uh, solution, then they will be focusing on some CRM solutions and, still for, uh, st and so forth inside their organization and offload the basics and the stuff that they don't want to bother themselves with to whoever provides that in a cloud computing fa fashion or in a hosted, hosted fashion. So this is basically what is the cloud, what is cloud computing, and actually why cloud computing in this aspect. Now, are we done with software as a service? Or what Microsoft tells and you know, prov provokes software plus services? Do you think we're done with that? Any, the thing that we're having cloud computing, does it actually replace software as a service? Or Complements or uses? Who can tell me what would be the best fit between the two? I think still we need the software, so like to connect with that service. Okay. Or like that. Very good. How about the software as a service? You know the software as a service model, like for example, um, SharePoint Online from Microsoft, something like that, or um, Salesforce.com for CRM Online. So, are we done with this kind of approach? How can I fit cloud computing with software as a service? My perspective, cloud computing is a trend and a bigger umbrella of looking at things. But reality, software as a service is the mechanism to do it. Or you can go with the other approach, software plus services, as another mechanism of doing it. So you can, you can say that software as a service or software plus service, it's not never you know, dead. It's just, you know, the engine or the how-to for cloud computing. That's basically it. So cloud computing, you can say it's what? It's, you know, the concept, it's the vision of a company maybe. But if they would like to deliver solutions in a cloud computing fashion, most probably they will be using software as a service or software plus services or maybe some other patterns if, if, the, if there is any. So this is basically the idea. So some people look at Microsoft and say, now Microsoft, you're, you're, you're talking about cloud computing. While two years back, you were talking about software plus services. What's the hack? Basically, software plus services is the engine to deliver for us, is to, the approach for cloud computing. That's basically it. So maybe it's worth talking about software plus services and the industry debate. You know the industry debate between software as a service or software plus services. Those who say software as a service, they would like to strip off the software piece and just deliver services over the internet. Okay? The, uh, the ones who actually with software plus services and the original ones who actually drove this was Microsoft, is saying, no, we cannot get rid of software. We still need software, but we need to couple it with services to provide software as a service, but via the approach of software plus services. So this is basically you know, the debate. So the debate was actually, you know, being, should I go, you know, with my own closed infrastructure, data center, whatever, whatever, that has its own benefits, right? Or should I go with some public cloud who can actually, I can offload everything to that public cloud. So the debate was like either this or that. While reality, it should be both. So I can actually take the strengths of software use it for, for my own business, and take the strengths of services over the web, over, over the cloud, couple that with the local software, and do amazing scenarios of, of different stuff. 
So what I would have actually, I will be using, you know, the, the, my own data center, my own whatever 